Welcome to The Gut Show. This is a space for the woman struggling with her gut or dealing with a digestive disorder like IBS. I'm your host, Erin Judge, registered dietitian and gut health expert. My mission is to cut the crap and have conversations about the reality of gut issues and solutions that work. So if you're ready to poop better, have more energy, and feel connected to a community that gets it, you're in the right place. Welcome back to The Gut Show. This episode is specifically for our females out there because it is all about your menstrual cycle. So if you do not have a menstrual cycle, This episode may not be exactly for you. You will learn a lot if you still want to listen. If not, maybe go back to a previous episode, catch up on that, review some information that directly applies, and then come back next week as we dive into a new topic. When we're looking at your menstrual cycle, it's so important that we break down what the menstrual cycle actually means, what it is, and how different phases of the cycle can impact IBS directly or indirectly. Um, We're also going to talk a little bit about changes in the menstrual cycle and what to know, Um, but know that there's so much to this topic that we cannot cover in one single episode. So be sure to take information in. I'll give you some resources if you need them, and then consult with your trusted healthcare professional to create a plan um, that can help you evaluate where you're at um, and then adjust what you need to um, to serve your body well. So when we're looking at hormones and IBS, we've talked about this in different ways in different episodes before, um, but hormones are directly involved in how the gut functions. So hormones are the communicators and the messengers in the body, and they all work together. So they're like, you know, a, a line of, you know, women who meet up at the hair salon gossiping <laughs> to run a town. It's a little bit like that. Um, they're always talking with each other, whether they're involved with digestion and your digestive hormones, um, your hunger fullness hormones, your hormones that are involved in the menstrual cycle, your sex hormones, or even um, your hormones that are involved in stress management, they're all going to communicate. And the reason why we have to think about that is when we're looking at some more supporting the hormonal systems as a whole, we have to make sure um, that we're taking into account the fact that they are communicating. So a lot of the things that we'll do to help hormones are going to overlap with what we would do for other hormonal systems, or even what we do generally for IBS. Um, That's a benefit. Um, It's also something to keep in mind as you're evaluating how your body might be responding or reacting, or even digging deeper into what could be driving your symptoms by understanding how these different pieces could potentially work together. So menstrual cycle, let's dive into the four stages of the menstrual cycle. And then we'll talk about what's really happening throughout those stages. So we have menstruation, we have the follicular phase, we have ovulation, and then we have your luteal phase. So menstruation is also known as your period. And this is the beginning of the menstrual cycle when the uterine lining sheds. So that's where the blood flow is actually coming from. So we typically consider the first day of the menstrual cycle, the first full bleed day of menstruation. So that doesn't mean like spotting, that means a full bleed day. Um, During menstruation, estrogen, so one of our sex hormones, estrogen and progesterone, which is another sex hormone, they are lower. So estrogen and progesterone are lower. And then prostaglandin, which is hormone-like, is elevated. So estrogen, progesterone low, prostaglandin high. The elevated prostaglandin can actually be the the cause of increased nausea, bloating, abdominal distension, that form of bloating, and pain during menstruation. So like the cramping, the pain that you may be feeling. Prostaglandins can also stimulate the motor activity of the gut, which could be one cause of more frequency and that looser consistency of bowel movements during menstruation. So we call them like period poops. The reason for it is likely our prostaglandins. Um, there could also be some cramping um, just from the uterine lining shedding, which can feel like it's digestive cramping, um, but that real like pain, cramping, and diarrhea is likely more related to the prostaglandin than the shedding itself. So the follicular phase, it actually overlaps. So menstruation is the bleeding. That's the start of our follicular phase. But the follicular phase, I can say that, actually goes over towards ovulation. So it's going to cover menstruation and then the gap between menstruation and ovulation. It's, It's going to be where estrogen levels start to rise. So our prostaglandins are high with menstruation. So they come back down. 
our progesterone is still kind of low, but our estrogen levels are rising up. So they're slowly increasing as we move through the rest of the follicular phase and go into ovulation. Ovulation is where the, the release of the egg from the ovary happens. And this is going to happen right in the middle of the menstrual cycle. So ovulation is one moment where the egg is released. Um, there's usually some cramping that might be involved with that release. Um, sometimes we consider the ovulation phase to be a few days. And the reason why is that you can only get pregnant during ovulation when the egg is released, um, but sperm can live for a few days. So they might consider ovulation being a few days. I'm not really a full menstrual cycle length, but a few days because sperm can live and might still be present when that egg is fully released. When this happens, estrogen levels are at their peak. So they're rising during our follicular phase and then they peak at the top of ovulation. Um, then they're going to drop significantly after and that drop, so that significant shift, can actually lead to an increase in constipation and bloating for many with IBS. So we typically see symptoms increase right after that drop in ovulation. And now if you're not familiar with the, the signs of ovulation, uh, we have that egg white um, discharge that we can see. There's also a way to kind of um, feel where your cervix is located. You can measure your temperature. There's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, but right after when estrogen levels drop, then you might see an increase in symptoms, which can explain why symptoms may happen, but there's no clear reason why. Ovulation is sometimes um, to blame for that. After ovulation, so the moment of ovulation, then we go into our luteal phase. So this is the time between ovulation, remember that moment of ovulation and the start of menstruation. So this is where the body is actually preparing for a possible pregnancy because the egg is released, it might get fertilized and you know its thing might happen. And so now the body's preparing for potential um, pregnancy. So this is where progesterone, so progesterone was kind of increasing, it drops. Um, and that can go throughout that phase leading up to menstruation. Um, that drop in progesterone, so the increase in progesterone um, that happens after your menstruation, kind of around ovulation when, when progesterone was increasing too, um, that's where you typically feel good, feel sexy. We love progesterone for that reason. Um, but as it drops leading up to menstruation, that's going to lead to abdominal pain, bloating, diarrhea, and nausea for those with IBS. So that's another... Um, place in the menstrual cycle where we typically see symptoms occur that's right before menstruation. So that might occur during maybe the times of spotting. If you spot a few days before a full bleed, so remember menstruation is the full bleed day. Um, if you're checking temperature and you're kind of tracking, or you have a very consistent cycle, you may actually know those few days before, even if you don't see signs of it, then you may notice that symptoms worsen as you lead up to your menstrual cycle. So everything that happens during the menstrual cycle, when it comes to symptoms, is directly related to the hormones. So remember, in menstruation, we have prostaglandins, they're released, that can lead to those period poops and symptoms, nausea as well. Then after your period is over, moving towards ovulation, at that drop of estrogen, we're going to see symptoms increase so right at the base of ovulation, particularly for those who are dealing with constipation. Then a few days before we start your period or menstruation, the peak of progesterone and that drop is going to cause pain, bloating, diarrhea, particularly nausea and all that for those with IBS, which can lead into a little bit more diarrhea during menstruation. So that is for someone who has just a very um, clear cycle, right? You have all the hormones doing what they do naturally. There are reasons for that to be different. So those who are dealing with um, like a PCOS or endometriosis, there may be a significant shift in the way that hormones are produced or released. And typically we're going to see abnormal cycles. So an abnormal cycle, which is, I think, uh, outside of the it's, I think it's 28 to 35 day window. That's where your, your cycle should fall. So if it's way too short 
are way too long, that could be considered abnormal. If you're skipping months, so let's say you only menstruate like once every few months and it's kind of all over the place and it, there seems to be no clear cycle or routine that's happening within your body, that's a sign that those hormones are off, some things going on. Um, or if you're on birth control, which is going to interfere um, and actually manipulate those hormones most of the time. I think there's only one form that doesn't, which I believe is the copper IUD. That's a conversation you want to have with your um, gynecologist or the person that you are getting your birth control support from. So if there's a change, then that is a, usually a red flag to me as a provider that hormones could be playing a very significant role. Um, and, and it's important to look deeper into what's happening. Is estrogen way too high? So do we have a really high um, amount of estrogen present? Is estrogen way too low? Are prostaglandins doing, are they being released like they need to? Is progesterone being released and like dropping at the rate that it's supposed to? Um, what's happening? And then when it comes to birth control, what did the birth, birth control manipulate? Because it can manipulate different pieces of the cycle. And so based on that manipulation, sometimes we can tell if birth control could be contributing to symptoms or if birth control may actually be helping symptoms and it can go in both directions. So the answer isn't, do you take birth control or not? The answer is it depends on your body and what's going on as well as your goals, because there's a lot of different reasons why you may go that route. And so it's just important to know how that could be impacting your body and look for some of these signs of these hormone shifts in your body. Um, as you go through your cycle, track your cycle, and then see how your symptoms may overlap. So some of the ways that we do this in our practice with our clients is one, in your tracking, make sure you're actually tracking the different phases of your cycle. So we actually have that. I don't have it um, right in front of me, but we have our, um, the My Gut Journal and where we have a sign for ovulation or menstruation. That's a great way to basically do it. Um, so what I do personally, if I'm tracking um, in a period of tracking, what I'll do is I'll write whether I'm in my luteal phase, I'll write if I'm a few days out from my period, just those notes that I, I kind of know about myself um, to help me understand like why symptoms might be higher. We also really recommend that you utilize some sort of a menstrual cycle tracking platform. Um, and so I really like doing the fertility awareness method where you're um, taking your temperature um, so the basal temperature, I learned this through, um, you can learn this through the period repair manual, which has been really helpful. Um, there's also one called, um, I think it's called ditch the pill or beyond the pill. That's another great book. Um, and then you can also talk like the, the gold Sanders, talk to your provider. There's a lot of, um, coaches out there as well that are, that will help specifically with, um, hormones and your cycle and getting your menstrual cycle kind of back on track. Um, but really checking when you're ovulating, when you're menstruating and trying to somehow get a handle on what those shifts in hormones look like for you. Um, and so noticing like, are you ovulating? Do you have that discharge? Like, do you, is your temperature changing? Um, are you noticing that you have a normal bleed? And those books that I mentioned, as well as your gynecologist should be able to help you measure that and understand that, um, from a personal um, side, the cup. So using like the cup versus like a tampon or even a pad is really helpful because you can visually see how much blood is being produced. Um, you can also utilize um, like a tampon conversion rate um, that a lot of the books as well as that your provider might be able to help you with to understand like, are you bleeding enough? Um, because that will be a sign of some of the hormones that are being released as well. Um, and then if you're on birth control, know that all of this is different. So it's important to understand how the birth control actually impacts you and are you having a menstrual cycle or is it just a, a pill bleed? Like what's going on? So we want to have those conversations as you start tracking your cycle. So you're tracking your ovulation, you're tracking your period. Look out for symptoms that seem to coordinate with those significant changes. So are you having an increase in symptoms on your period that could be related to the period poops, right? Are you having um, symptoms that seem to go with your ovulation that might be from that drop in hormones? Are you seeing symptoms pop up right before your period that might be from a drop in hormones? Um, really look out for if there's some consistency there. And if there is, then that's a great sign that the food that you're eating or maybe some changes that you're making or other things that you're looking at 
may not be to blame for those symptoms. And I see this a lot in practice. I see um, people going through like FODMAP diet or just kind of changing things and they have that increase in symptoms. And the first thing that gets blamed is the food, like, oh, what must be this thing? And so that can lead to unnecessary restriction or fear of foods that um, isn't, isn't needed because it wasn't the food, maybe it was the hormones that were involved. And then and now that you know that, and if you can recognize that, then what you can do as you track your cycle and at, if your cycle is, um, you know, consistent, of course, you can proactively prepare for the symptoms that might be present. So if you know that you have more constipation around ovulation, you might increase your fiber. You might bump up your movement a little bit. Maybe you incorporate some um, kiwi or magnesium, you know, or something like that to help you go. If you know that you have a more diarrhea, uh, to, at the start of your period and on your period, then maybe you implement more self-care. You bring down the intensity of your movement. Um, you choose foods that are, are easy to digest that, you know, won't trigger you. You really bring stress down all of those different, um, kind of strategies that you can use. So you can actually proactively plan for that change in symptoms to support your body. Well, and that's true self-care, right? Supporting your body in the moment, using your intuition and what you've learned about yourself to be able to make those changes um, so that you can have the least amount of symptoms possible. Um, and then if you're having um, abnormal cycles or you, you're noticing that 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 trigger of your symptoms during those times is so significant. Like it's the most severe trigger that you have, then that may be a sign that you need a plan in place to support your hormones. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, it does usually come down to stress management. And that's not just psychological stress of, oh, you're anxious, you know, write it down, journal, meditate, go to therapy. Those things are incredibly important. What also matters is cortisol, the stress hormone. So really bringing down cortisol, which includes sleeping well, a lot of things that we talk about all the time, bringing down your intensity of movement, um, really activating the parasympathetic nervous system, which can go back to vagal nerve activity. So when we talked about the vagus nerve um, in one of our episodes, like that would be really helpful to revisit um, or working with a provider that understands those different layers and pieces that can give you a very specific plan for your body. That way you are kind of looking at this in a holistic way versus only treating it or, you know, managing it through food because it, it goes beyond food. If we've learned anything about IBS through this podcast, through conversations that we may have had, um, through social media, through your own experiences with providers, we know that it's not just about food. It's not straightforward all the time. There are layers involved and it's important to look at these layers because that's going to give you more insight into your body so that you can serve your body well. So I hope that was helpful. Um, just a deep dive into the menstrual cycle. We also have a full blog on this on our website. So if you feel like you got a little bit lost in this conversation, um, I'll be sure to put that blog in the show notes so that you can revisit that um, and dig deeper. If, and as always, join us in the gut community on Facebook, again, LinkedIn show notes, and to have another conversation about this. If you have questions or maybe aha moments or something that really stood out to you in this conversation, take it over to the Facebook community or on Instagram and um, tag me at erinjudge.rd so we can chat a little bit more. Hope you have an amazing rest of your day, whatever that looks like for you right now in this moment. And I'll see you on the next episode. Do you like what you heard? Leave us a review. Do you want to connect with others in this community? Join our Facebook group, The Gut Community, or follow us on Instagram. All links can be found in show notes. Thank you for listening, and we will see you next time on The Gut Show.